How's everyone doing? I'm Phil Frisbee. I'm doing my presentation um, on XML Retrieval. I chose to do XML Retrieval because I'm taking a course in it this year. You know, I figured why not learn something new. Uh, start off first, what is XML? Uh, it stands for Extensible Markup Language. Um, it's like HTML, but you know, that's the um, presentation language that it gets formatted into, whereas XML is nothing to do with the presentation, it's just a description. Um, it's a meta language used for structure and structured information. Uh, so XML is based around you know, the structure and we'll get into that a little later as I have an example to show. Um, it's used to store and transport data where HTML is used to um, visualize the data. Um, standard design, it's standard design um, by a group to exchange data interchangeably. You know, so take libraries, for example, they have a system set up, an XML structure set up uh, where they, you know, have a, in, incorporate the Dewey Decimal System and um, you're able to look for books easily. Um, it's used to specify the logical structure of documents, said that, and it's used by web services to send data back and forth, um, requests and responses. Um, XML's main importance is metadata. You know, without metadata, there would be no information to be structured. Um, and metadata is, for those who don't know, which most people do, it's data about data. Um, you can keep going data about data about data about data. Um, examples of data is, uh, you know, an article. Um, I'm a GA for um, Scholars Archive at the Dewey Library, and I work with this a lot. You know, examples of example of metadata would be like an article. When you have an article, you have a title, you have a journal, you have an author, you have the description, the abstract, the citation, you know, all that stuff that all is the metadata of the article or for anything else. Uh, what is XML not? XML is not a programming language. You know, we said that, you know, linking it back to HTML, it's not the programming language and it's not the presentation, it's just the structured data. Um, XML basics are elements and attributes. These are just basic uh, things, you know, for going back to the article example, um, an author would be an uh, element, the uh, abstract would be an element, you know, and then attributes are everything that's underneath that, like the smaller structure broken down into. So, um, this is going to be a document tree. This is the structure for um, all XML files. They have a root element at the top, and they get broken down into the elements, and then each element gets broken down more and more into text, and you see how this element has an attribute, um, which in this case, the uh, we're going to talk about plays, and then it gets broken down into the author, the act, and the title, and so on and so forth. Um, and this is actually what the document will look like. So going back to this slide quickly, you'll see how this information is all incorporated into this. You know, the author, the act number, which is the, the author, in this case, is the element. This is the attribute. That's another attribute, and it goes down the line. Validation, in order for XML to work, it has to be well formatted and validated. Um, there are a bunch of different online things you can plug it into, and there's a program that you can download on um, Windows that's called Exchanger, and it formats and tells you what line has an error and uh, really helps you understand, almost kind of like Notepad++, but it um, shows exactly where the mistake is and it formats it nicely for you to look at. Um, validate with a DDT and XSL. There are just two kinds of schemas that um, and languages that are, you're able to use in order to validate against the XML file. Um, so information retrieval with XML. Now I'm going to link it after the background that I just gave. I'm going to link it all together. But first, let me do a quick example. I'm going to go over here and show you this. I was talking about. Um, the trees before. So one of my examples that we did in uh, my class is the tree um, is this, you know, the root element is the resale products and underneath that's the title, subtitle. 
and under that is the product and all of these you know description condition price commission and message message are elements of the product while the attributes of price are original price and sale price so i'm going to show on the screen just how that looks quickly um the xml document is this guy it's kind of hard to see probably but you know here's the whole thing broken down and this is the actual xml file where at the top you have to have the definition you can recall everything in the style sheet and the css which is the same thing um, have all the hierarchies here the products and for each one there's stuff within it so product description of the product, the condition of the product, the price of the product, original and sale price, the commission, and then you close that to make sure to close each tab. And then the CSS, which has all of the, you know, fancy fonts and um that's what I'm looking for. Just the layout, there we go. You know, each one has its own layout, so the title layout is block. 400, 18 point font, margin left to 20 pixels. All right, now let's get into the good stuff. So, a uh, few things we learned in class, you can relate to XML. Um, the vector space model, which is, ha which is where each node is split up into multiple nodes to see where they come together and split. Um, documents and queries are represented as vectors. You know, these are the formula for each. Um, you have the document one, which is, you know, uh, of the query, and then the query one. Um, unstructured retrieval. Um, you can see here how, again, we have a hierarchy and the uh, root element and the elements. Um, all broken down and for unstructured retrieval you want to make sure that um, in this case the title and the author both are Julius Caesar so you have to make sure that they are split up um, that way they don't get confused and you know exactly what you're talking about I mean here you don't if you uh, search for the term Julius Caesar it's going to give you title and author but you need to make sure they're split so there's a difference and when talking about actual XML retrieval um, all of the nodes get split up, you know, so in broken down that, you know, um, the hierarchy is um, only for that given one. So here when you have books, go to the title to Microsoft. Microsoft is its own node. Um, title goes to Microsoft. Book then title to Microsoft. And then go back to the last thing that I was speaking of. The author gets split, so each, each word is its own, you know, like my name would get split. Uh, to fill up and then frisbee as a separate node um, to make it easier to spot and uh, identify using the structured hierarchies. Um, vector space and XML retrieval. The idea is that each dimension and the vector space encodes a term together with its position within the XML tree, which is what I gave an example of and had on the screen earlier, the tree of the hierarchy. Uh, the queries and documents are transformed into the space of Flexicalized subtrees, um, which makes particular structure matches possible. You now, as I was saying, like, everything's got to be split up. Uh, flexicalized trees, uh, each one contains at least three, at least one vocabulary term. Um, it checks for relevance and documents. Uh, D, which was the equation before, and Q, the uh, the query query. Um, then and the find you can find the then they're measured for similarity between the two vectors and measured resemblance between XML fragments and XML documents and then you gotta make sure to, in, to index it all because indexing is the only way that they're gonna be able to be uh, spotted and um, found later on like metadata. Going off of that, cosine similarity um, works kinda hand in hand with um, the vector space uh, the ranking can be done by using document similarities theory, compares angles between document vector and the query vector. In order to calculate uh, cosine, you're going to take the document times the query. Um, down here is an example where uh, D2 times query is the intersection, or the dot 
Um, it's actually called the. Let's see what we got next. The dot product. Um, the dot product of the document D2 is a figure to the right, and the query Q is the figure vectors. Uh, is the norm of vector and is the norm of vector Q. The norm of a vector is calculated as such. So the sum of all queries. The dot product is very easy to find once you know how to do it. Um, it's the product of two vectors. So you have vector A and vector B, or document A, document B. Um, wherever they intersect and have um, like terms, um, it's going to be where they're going to be the same. Um, the results will be ranked to see which is the top ranked documents for a query. Additional information in order to find both of them. Um, first you need to find the TF, which is the term frequency, um, which measures how frequent a term occurs in a document. Um, the formula for that, uh, TF of T, equals the times a term appears in a document over the total number of terms in the document. I think I did that wrong. Um, TF of T is number of times term T appears in a document over the total number of terms in the document. No, that's correct. Um, the IDF is the inverse document frequency, um, which measures how important the term is opposed to others. Um, IDF T log E is log E of total number of documents over the number of documents within ter with a term T in it. Um, TF IDF is the product of both TF and IDF, so once you find the answer for this and this, you're able to find TF IDF, which is used in the dot product. Um, stepping it back, we're going to go uh, text centric versus data centric. These are um, two types of information that can be used in uh, XML retrieval. Um, text centric uh, focuses on matching a query text to text in the document and text only. Um, text is a higher priority over the structure, which data centric deals with, um, characterized by long text fields, inexact matching, and relevance ranked. And an example of this would be um, like an article or issues in a journal, like I spoke of before, it's just text. The metadata is just text. Um, whereas data centric is numerical, non text attribute, value data, exact match conditions, so it has to exactly match what it is if you're looking for John Doe, you have to find John Doe. Um, requires no ranking, it's complex structure. Example would be find employees whose salary is the same this month as it was 12 months ago. Now the only way you're going to find that is with index data and data that's in a database. Um, a few other things quickly. Uh, XML query, is, there's three categories, uh, namely tag-based, path-based, and clause-based. Namely tags are words uh, annotated with single name tag. They're intuitive. They only express simple and important structural constraints. Cannot express relationships. Uh, the language for this is X-search. Path-based, uh, location path is most important. Um, the navigation steps within the document. The language for these is XPath and Nexi, which was developed by INEX, and it's way less ex expressive. Clause-based, uh, it's similar to SQL, which most of you probably know. It's a standard query language for relational databases. They consist of nested clauses for information needs. Uh, languages are XQuery and XQuery full text, which I'm going to go into quickly. XML query, XQuery, is a query and functional programming language that queries and transforms collections of structured and unstructured data, usually in the form of XML. Um, so this is like the core of XML retrieval right here, you know. You need a language like SQL, you know, that's got four something and it retrieves the data from a database. Um, core expressions here, in this case, are F, our floor. Uh, for, let, where, order, and return, and as you know, SQL has its own set of terms that it uses to pull stuff from their databases. Uh, disadvantage of this, though, is there's no ranking and it's limited text search capabilities. Next, we got XQuery full text. It was developed due to limitations within XQuery. 
you know, not being able to get enough information from it, um, and some other errors they had. It defines primitives for searching text, such as phrase, word order, word proximity, um, and it's relied upon in applications involving expert users. Medical domain, patient industry, and law are the most important ones. And that's it. I hope you learned a lot about it. Uh, if you have questions, you know, post it on a thread, and I will definitely get back to you. Enjoy.